All right. So I got to ask you a question. Why are you so lonely? And, and, and I don't mean just why in a relationship sense. I mean, in general, we as a society, why are we so lonely? Why are we so compartmentalized? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. First one here is from Axolotls with Cream. It says it twitches, it hungers. We have we have Timer Kun, tentacles and TVs. I love how that just became the villain of the show. Anyways, next one is from Sir Uncle Ned. Uh, I asked Dolly for a biblically correct angel with cat ears instead of eyes, and this is what it spat out. Not sure why it included text, but I feel like this can be some kind of thing. Next one we have here is from uh, Kira Sakura, and while there is no context given, it is still Timer Kun with his tentacles and TV head. He is here. As always, everyone, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, please drop it in the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and get into the conversation at hand after you subscribe and hit the bell notification icon but axolotls with cream thank you very much for getting your points for an owl oh, well. oh well. anyways so uh, why he looked like slender man though uh, because he's about to slender into those dms that didn't work that didn't that didn't that didn't work at all anyways anyways this fan art makes for quite the context with the video content by our description. Why are you so lonely? Because you don't have a tentacled TV-headed daddy, I guess. But no, no, seriously. Why are you and why are we as lonely as we are? Why do we find ourselves substituting uh, normal one-on-one -on -one communication with people with, well, we're live on Twitch, right? Why are you lonely? Aside from just hopping into a chat room and looking at a VTuber model of a guy in a maid outfit covered in pink slime. There's certainly a lot of things that can be said about my show, but being normal isn't one of them. Well, there's actually a good reason for that. There's a good reason why we find ourselves in the various lonely, atomized situations that we do. And I don't know if you have really thought about them so much, but a lot of them gets, uh, comes down to urban planning specifically so i'm gonna get into okay tails theme you're obnoxious go away anyway so i want to introduce you all to nathan ellebeck he's actually got a very good video on walkable communities and why they're important and why they lower that loneliness and desperation that we feel as people. I'm going to go ahead and let the video speak for itself, but I think y'all will enjoy. Also, Stabby Key, thank you for redeeming your points for an ada ada, you fucking degen. Let's go. Let's talk about the importance of third places. A third place is somewhere people hang out that isn't home and isn't work. Like cafes, clubs, bars, libraries, churches, parks, plazas, barbershops. You get the idea. This All right, before we continue, I'm going to go ahead and say this is where I've got to advocate for my third place. I go to a card shop. I'm not going to say which one because I don't want any of y'all stalking me there. But I go to a card shop. I play card games with people. That is my third place. That's where I go to meet friends. That's where I go to spend time. That's where I go to hang out. I actually did a Patreon video years ago explaining uh, that I was, not years ago, like a year and a half ago, explaining that I was quitting World of Warcraft so that I could instead go to Friday Night Magic because I was getting depressed. Playing an MMO was actually actively depressing me because it made me feel isolated. I was in a very good guild uh, that did raids, and raids of 40 people you'd think would make you feel like you're in a big group of all kinds of people doing the same thing, but it actually makes you feel that much more lonely. If you're in a large enough crowd, 
it's very easy to feel isolated. So I switched to my Fridays being used for card game stuff, and I've not really regretted that decision ever since. I said, can you have a virtual third place? You can, but it's not the same thing. It's really not the same thing. We as humans, psychologically, we we want to be in more than just home and work. We want a third place. We want another location to be at. In a pinch, a virtual location will work. But it's not the same. This concept was coined by Ray Odenberg, who described them as the anchors of communities, where relationships are formed through spontaneous conversations and art and activities. And throughout the US, we've lost them. In his book, Bowling Alone, Robert Putnam noted this has been a steady decline for decades with dropping club memberships, church attendance, and other forms of social participation. Now the causes behind this trend are complex and have to do with technology, polarization, institutional distrust, and the splintering of Christianity as our culture's default religion. That said, it's also largely perpetuated by car-dependent suburban sprawl. You so I do want to say one thing. Um, I understand where he's where he's coming from uh, when he's talking about like, hey, uh, Christianity is not the main religion that people have anymore, so people don't tend to congregate the way that they used to uh, in churches. Please note that what he's doing is not advocacy for religious uh, indoctrination. That's not what's going on here. It's just simply a fact that a building like a church is a third place for some people. It's the other place that's not work or home where you hang out. That doesn't mean I'm going to advocate for going to one, but do understand that's where he's coming from. See, all cities, big and small, used to have densely populated downtowns where people experienced chance encounters and supported local businesses with foot traffic. As Euclidean zoning segregated suburban housing from shopping districts, those places slowly died out. Then private companies tried to fill the void with malls as the new town square, which were dominated by big businesses. But then they started dying too when online shopping took over. So now we've lost most of our gathering places outside of major cities. The third places most suburbs have today are car dependent convenience chains like Starbucks or lifestyle centers in some wealthier areas, which are all just consumer-centric businesses modeled after how on the go we've become. Plus, every town still has that one bar where everyone meets and then drunkenly drives home from. But those are often depressing too, because rather than being one of several third places, they've become the single place people go each week to escape their life's routine. Because if you have to drive over 20 minutes to and from work every day, you likely don't have the time or the energy to then drive to a third place, other than maybe on a Friday night. This is why people try to replicate community online through multiplayer video games and forums and social media groups. It's also how a lot of alternative scenes for skating and music are created in the suburbs by angsty kids who carve out spaces in basements and fire halls and abandoned lots. Good third places are hard to come by today. Ones that encourage regulars to just hang out for hours, talking to strangers or reading books with little to no pressure to buy things. Or ones that don't encourage rushing out the door with mobile orders when you build mixed-use neighborhoods that combine okay there's more to the video we're gonna get into the next bit uh but i do want to know this is one of the reasons why i will always advocate for the card shop as a third place any good card shop worth its salt is going to want you to come in meet people game and just relax they're going to want you to come in and just dick around. Whether or not you buy something is secondary. Yes, you should buy things in your local card shops and your local communities to uh, support those businesses. But the purpose of that place, by and large, is to have an area for you to sit down and loiter in. An area for you to hang out with people and meet people. My current group of friends that I have where I live have all been met via card shops. One of my best friends who lives uh, 30, 35 miles north of me now, we met in a card shop. Uh, the group that I spend every single weekend with, we met in a card shop. And one of my friends, Ocean, uh, Ocean Keltoy, if you've ever seen his content, you should. This is my plug. Go check out Ocean Keltoy. You, you should do that. That's a thing you should do. Anyway, we also hang out 
in a card shop. Because sitting down at a table to play Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Magic the Gathering with random-ass people, it gives you a vector to talk with people, to meet people, to be part of a community. And it is amazing how much better your mental health gets when you are part of a community, when that isolation of being home and alone can be stripped away in favor of conversation. But let's continue the video itself. Codes that combine housing with commerce, foot traffic can support these places. Not to mention organic events pop up like block parties, barbecues, and yard sales. It's undeniable that technology has changed the ways we view community. But I don't think anything can replace the need for organic in-person connections that we get from third places. Without walkable communities, third places can't thrive. And without third places, we lose the heart of our communities. So, this is why, as an example, uh, when we're done at the at the shop, when the shop closes, because my shop that I go to closes early for some weird reason, not a big fan of that, um, but it closes early, which isn't the greatest, but I bring four chairs and a table wherever I go in the back of my car. When the shop closes, if we don't want to go out and get food yet, I drop the table down, I drop the chairs down, and we hang out outside, literally just in the parking lot. I'm a 30-year-old dude. And we've got other people between the ages of 25 and fucking 50. We'll just fucking hang out around a table with chairs in a concrete parking lot at midnight. <laughs> like, it is it is crazy how just having a community around you can affect the decisions you make and the ways in which you engage with your own mental health. So I want to do uh, this as a preamble video. Because I want to have a handful of walkable communities sent to me for me to go through and experience. Because where I live, everything is segmented. I live literally in the woods. For me to go anywhere, it's about a 15-minute drive out from where I am. And that's to get groceries, that's to get food, that's for anything whatsoever. So, I want to be introduced to some actual walkable communities. Not a neighborhood with a corner store at the end of it, but an actual place, several actual places, where you can do everything on foot without the use of a car. If me going to any place I want to go to requires the usage of a car, to me, that's not a walkable community. If I can go uh, to recreation, to a gym, uh, to get groceries, and to a residential zone, all on foot with no issue whatsoever... That's a walkable community to me. Discord Vandal says, we'd get shoot off by lot security at my old card shop. Yeah, I've been shoot off by lot security before. Not here, but uh, back when I was playing Pokemon Go, uh, there was a place that I used to go to uh, that lot security would get us kicked out from. But mass transit would be a thing that helps as well. But I want to do some content on walkable communities and the ways in which uh, the people who live there engage and live their lives i know that there's other content creators that do shit like this but i want to address this question better why urban planning literally segments us and causes us to have less of a reliance on one another i said look into uh, Asheville, north carolina then i'll have to take a look at that there are real third places not fake committee starbucks third places yet yeah, places like a starbucks that's not really a third place, because if you're sitting down at a table there, you are taking up space that can be taken up by someone else, and that's not super great. Uh, you can cause issues, you can cause uh, disruptions that way. Sitting in the middle of there for four to five hours, somebody will probably get onto you at some point. A third place to me is some place that you can sit at for eight to 12 hours and nobody get onto you. It can be a public park. It can be a dance hall. I know for me, uh, back when I was growing up, swing dancing. Like, I, I was either at the card shop or I was going swing dancing. Those were my two things. So, I'd like that. Speaking about the creators, are you familiar with the work of Not Just Bikes? Yes, I am. Uh, Adam Something? No. I have not watched Adam Something, but I have seen Not Just Bikes. Said uh, Big Lawns and Two Car Garages. Big Lawns and Two Car Garages are dumb. Said Swing Dancing, Damn You're Old. Yeah, I'm 30. 
Anywho. So libraries are typically good as well. Libraries are good third places, but it takes me about a 20 minute drive to get to the local library. It's very inconvenient. Are suburbs a kind of social murder? Yeah. That's... I. As far as I am concerned, suburbs, insofar as they have been built as like purely residential zones that are separated from the educational areas, that are separated from uh, commercial areas, that killed a great deal of our ability to socialize with one another easily. I grew up in the suburbs. I cannot recommend growing up in the suburbs. Yep. <sighs> but with that said, I know that's a very brief video, but I did want to go ahead and talk about it a little bit and hopefully start some kind of a series on this. Who knows? Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. If you have any recommendations of places I should check out. And with all that said, everybody, please... Go find a third pace to go hang out with friends. Insert end of video tagline here. <laughs>